Welcome back to the channel. This is where I teach you guys everything you need to know about After Effects. Now, this is my second time recording this video because I recorded like five videos earlier today, except I had my OBS settings wrong, so it, they're pretty much unusable and I gotta re record everything. But nevertheless, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, guys. It really supports the channel. But without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the tutorial, guys. So, yeah, I'm pretty bummed out having to re record the videos, but as you guys can see, we got a new setup as well. I got the world's cheapest green screen behind me, and I also got some clips here that we're gonna edit. So, as you can see, these clips right here are from my umbrella edit. A link to that will be in the description down below as well as the clip. So if you want to edit along and follow along to the tutorial, feel free to do so. But anyway, guys, enough rambling. Let's get started. So as you guys can see, I already got a song import into After Effects. You guys read the title. We're going to be syncing clips using timer mapping the music. So as you can see, we got the song. I'm just going to import it into the composition. And I also got the clips imported as well. So I'm just going to drag it on here as well. But anyway, guys, let's get started. So the first thing you want to know when syncing clips to timer map is you first want to know the actual song you're editing to. It is extremely important that you understand the flow of the song. So first things first, we got to really get an idea of what we're working with. So to do that, we're just going to click on the song right here. Press L on the keyboard twice to open up the waveform. Now your waveform probably won't look like this. It might look a little different. It might look something like, like this. And this is kind of hard to tell what you're actually syncing to. So in order to make it look more visually appealing and easier to understand, all you got to do is go here, click on this icon, rectified audio waveforms, and turn that off. And you'll be able to see a lot better what we're working with. But anyway, guys, here's the song we're editing to. Let me just press play. So I also want to mention that the flow and velocity of your edit heavily depends on the song. So some songs are really easy to sync to, some are really hard to sync to. This is kind of like a medium type song. It's not too hard, not too easy. But anyway, we got to understand what we're working with. So even having this waveform open is very helpful. It's not too practical because it does slow down After Effects quite a bit having this open. So we're going to start adding markers to our beats and we're just going to start syncing to the beats. So to find out what we're syncing to, you really want to pay attention to all flows of the music. So you want to pay attention to the melody, the kick the snares and all that stuff so if we give it a listen so as you can see over here we got a kick we can sync to and there's two more kicks over here so we'll add markers there and to add markers you just simply press the asterisk key which is the little star icon and there's another kick over here and there's a snare over here we can sync to and there's another kick over here as well we also got stuff over here so as you can see, we already got our song pretty much markered out of what we're going to sing to, but you really want to spend time and know exactly how you want it to flow. So these markers are going to be the reference of what we're syncing to. Now let's get on to the actual syncing part. So as you can see, this is the clip over here. Now, like I said, this is from my umbrella edit. And if you're downloading the clips, you might notice that these clips are extremely slow. So if I play it... It's very slowed down. Now, some clips are going to be really slow like this. And the reason for that is because I lowered the game's time scale, meaning that I slowed the game down. So when we speed it up, we have more frames to work with. So as you can see, because it's so slowed down, all we got to do is right click on it, go to time, go to time stretch. And because 100% is normal speed, we want to speed it up to where it matches the actual real time speed. So if I lower that to 0.6, which I know is perfect for this clip right here, it's going to be at normal speed. Now you won't have to do this. If you're just editing like any clip, for an example, like Valorant clips or any of the latest COD clips or CSGO clips, most of the time you don't have to do this step. However, if you're editing my clips or you're editing clips that were slowed down just so you could get more frame rate, make sure you fix the time stretch. So as you can see, our clip is now normal speed. Now all we got to do now is sync it up to the actual beat so let me give it a listen again okay so i see what i want to do now so i want the clip to start off over here so we're just going to drag it out over here i'm going to control shift d to cut it there now everybody has a different way of syncing however i'm going to show you the way which i find is the easiest and best way to understand so what we're going to do is we're just going to simply line the shots up so here's a shot over here i'm going to cut this by control shift d i'm going to go to the next shot right here control shift d that as well and we just want to line these up to the main sync points <laughs> Right here is where I think the shot should be synced to, because as you guys can see, the whole edit right here is only kicks, but right here we have a really loud snare, which has a lot of impact. So what I'm thinking is we build the impact all the way up to here. The impact's gonna be built up to that snare. It's gonna slow down, and then we're gonna line up the next shot to the next kick. So let's give it a listen again. 
right here is where the next shot should be so we're gonna drag this over here to where he shoots him Control shift d Control x to delete that now this is the easiest part because all we're really doing is lining up the shots and then we're gonna do timer map to make it look a lot better okay there's another thing here we can sync to which is the last little kick so we're gonna add the shot there and let's see how that looks Okay, that looks fine. Now, another thing I want to mention before we get on to timer mapping is the frame rate of your clips really does have a big effect on what you're editing. So as you can see, these clips are about 600 FPS. Most people aren't editing 600 FPS. Most people are editing 60 or 30 FPS. And if you're editing 30 or 60 FPS, you're probably going to be dropping frames. Now, what dropping frames is, is let's say you slow the clip down. It's going to look like it's lagging a bunch. You're going to look like you're missing frames. It's freezing. It's lagging. And it'll just overall look pretty distorted. So to fix that, what we're going to do is enable motion blending which is this option right here so if we enable motion blending and you slow the clip down if it's missing any frames instead of just freezing or looking laggy it's gonna try and fill it in now it will still look pretty distorted however it does look a lot better than just freezing and looking all laggy but now that we have our shots synced up let's actually get on to timer mapping so to timer map we're gonna select our first clip we're gonna start and go from left to right I find that way works best and what we're gonna do now is just select the clip press ctrl alt t this is gonna enable timer mapping now you can also also do this by going up here and right clicking it going to enable timer mapping but once we have our clip with timer mapping on it what I usually do is go to the start of the clip place a keyframe there go to the end of the clip place the keyframe there as well and then I delete the very first and the very last ones so we're only left with these two keyframes which is this part right here now that we have our two keyframes, the next thing we're going to do is select them both, press F9 on our keyboard. What that's going to do is it's going to enable easy easing because it allows them to be edited. You can also easy ease them by right clicking on them, going to keyframe assistant, clicking on easy ease. However, F9 is just a lot faster to do. But once we have them easy eased, if we click over here, this is going to open our graph editor. Now our graph editor is going to be very confusing. However, I'll try and explain as best I possibly can. So we can move around by holding middle mouse click. We can open and full screen it by pressing the tilde key, which is the little grave key the little swiggly line underneath the escape key and we can do this for any window so if i go up here press the grave key or tilde key full screen that full screen this full screen this and to exit out you just press it again but anyway once we have that out of the way we're pretty much good to go now this is the hardest part of the video and that is getting the flow down now flow if i'm being honest is probably the hardest thing you can master in an edit all right flow it's the most basic simple fundamental building block of making your edit look good however it is also also the hardest thing to master so I'm gonna try and explain it best I possibly can so before we can get onto flow and making it look all synced and looking all nice we first need to understand how it even works so right here we got the timeline so if I scroll from left to right we can obviously scrub through it the way timer mapping works is very different so obviously if I'm on this frame right here this line right here is going to be at this point in time so if I drag this up hold control and place the keyframe there and drag it up on this particular frame, it's gonna be at this point in time. So the higher up your keyframe or graph is, the more further in time it is, and the lower it is, the more behind in time it is. Once you really understand how this works, you can do pretty much anything with this. So as you can see, because this part over here, if we drag this over there, it's going to start off really slow at first, and then it's gonna speed up because it's getting steeper. And the higher it goes, the more further in time it is. So if it's really flat like this, for an example, it's gonna be at this point in time a lot longer. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I'll drag this over here and I'll drag this like this. Now, if you can tell by what I just said, it's going to start off really slow and then it's going to go really fast because it's going to be on this point in time for longer and this point in time for shorter. So as you can see, that's what I mean by it. Now, obviously, that doesn't look good at all. So if we drag this up like this, just to show you guys another example, like I said, the height is essentially what point in time it is at. So height up and down on the Y axis is what point in time it is. And then left to right or the X axis is going to be at basically what frame it'll be at. So if I have it like this, it's going to start off at this point in time. If I want it to start further back, I drag this back here. If I want it to start sooner or later in time, I drag this up like this. Now, because the graph is like this this is how the time's gonna work it's gonna start at this point in time it's gonna be really fast it's gonna slow down but as you guys can see here it goes downwards now this is really important because as you can see the graph is going up meaning it's going forward in time but because it curves down it's gonna reverse so what's gonna happen is it's gonna speed up freeze here for a minute and then it's gonna go backwards let's see how that looks 
So that's how I mean. Any point in time when your graph is going downwards, it's gonna reverse. So now that we have a basic understanding of how the graph works and how time works, we can really modify and play around with this. So what I'm thinking of doing is I think I kind of want it to start where he's already running. So I'm gonna drag it up so it's forward in time. And I also want it to start off kind of fast. Now over here is where the main impact is. Now we can't really see it because it's playing this clip right here. So even if I edit this a bunch, and you can also edit it by dragging this out like this, as you can see, nothing's happened because we can't really see what that frame is doing. So I'm gonna go one frame to the left, drag it out like this, and now we can see what we're doing. So what I wanted to do is I wanna really show off the animations. I feel like that looks really good. So we have a long pause here where there's nothing really going on, and we have a kick here. What I think we should do is on that kick is when he pulls the gun out, and then we're gonna have this part right here be really fast so let's go to where the kick is which is this part right here i'm going to place the keyframe there by clicking on that or i can hold control down and click on the graph now what i'm going to do now is i want to really show off that animation so i'm going to go over here like this actually i think i messed it up we're going to have this come over here to where this is so what we're going to do now is we're going to drag this up as well and then right over here he's going to pull the gun out and i really want to slow that off so i'm gonna full screen this so we can see what we're doing we're going to find the point in time that looks the coolest, so I'll make a new keyframe there. And we're going to have it right here. So I feel like this part looks the coolest, so we want to show that off more. Whatever frame or whatever point in the clip looks the coolest is usually what I like to show off the longest. So I'm going to make it like this. Drag that down so it's fast at the end. Drag this up so it's fast to it. Move this over here. Now as you can see, it's going to go boom slow down and then shoot now there's also another kick over here right here so what i want to do is make another keyframe there and i also want to show off him putting the gun away so as you can see he puts it away and grabs it back really quickly and shoots so we're going to try and show that off in this clip now every clip is very different however like i said once you understand how the graph and how time mapping works you can pretty much do anything so we're going to go over here i'm going to bring this up some more this is when he starts to put the gun away so i want to find a part where like he has the gun put away so we're gonna full screen this go over here make a new keyframe maybe drag it up like that just so it starts off fast slowly slows down slows down some more puts it back boom so we're gonna have it like this now there's also another kick here we can mess around with so i'll place a keyframe there and like i said i want the first part to be fast so we're gonna have it go like this I'm gonna be fast over here and another thing I didn't even mention, which is really important too, is the graphs are usually linked together. So if I move this handle around, they're moving with each other, which is useful sometimes. However, in this instance, it's just gonna get in our way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and you'll notice your cursor does change. So when your cursor changes, if you hold it, as you can see, now they're unlinked and now we can move them separately. So I can go here, move that like that and get something a little more like that. Because before they were linked together and they'll correspond with each other. But once we hold Alt, they'll pretty much just go their separate ways now if we want to do that again we can hold all again and now they're back to linked we hold all again and do it now they're unlinked again and it's really useful so now i have the graph kind of how i want it now like i explained earlier it really depends on the point in time so this might look really confusing if you're just starting off and it is really confusing i'm not gonna lie however let me walk you through what's gonna happen so i haven't played it yet however just based on this this is what i can tell okay so it's gonna start off really fast slow down go fast again slow down go fast again here then it's going to really slow down there and it's going to go fast again boom and then it's going to shoot so as you can see we kind of have an idea of how our edit is going to flow let's play it out and see how it looks okay so that looks not too bad i feel like it is very fast though and i think i know why it's because this part is super low in time meaning that this part's got to play really fast before it gets up to this part so what we can do is select these two keyframes and just drag them up a little now it might get a little off center that's okay we can just drag it here now i do want it to start a little bit over here so we're gonna make it a little less steep by dragging it up some more and then what that's going to do is it's going to make it be not as fast, a little slowed down. And let's see how it looks now. Okay, that looks a lot better. So like I said, guys, this is probably really confusing if you're just starting off. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to understand. Now, another thing that is very important to flow is impact. And I mentioned it very briefly, but let me explain it some more. So as you can see, we got an impact over here, which is this snare. There's no snare up until that point. I mean, there's kind of snares here, but we're not going to edit that right now. So if I play it out...
That snare right there really stands out. You got kicks here, it's like dun dun, bum, pew, and then that's where all the impact is, which is why I put the shot there. So if I control Alt T, enable timer mapping on here, make a keyframe there, make a keyframe here, delete these two. Now what I think will look really impactful is if we have this go super slow because we got a really fast buildup and then we got a big strong impact. So it's gonna be like a rising and then it's gonna climax where it's like boom and then it's gonna have like a resolution where it chills out. So it's gonna build up fast here, boom. And then right here is where I think we'll do something else. So what I think we'll do here is we'll delete this. And what we're gonna do here is I think we'll add a cinematic. Now, most of you guys probably won't have cinematics. If you're editing something like Valorant or I don't know, just like a new Call of Duty like MW2 that just came out, it's pretty hard to get cinematics on them. They're very hard to come by. So if you just have to go with only the POV only, that's okay. But because I'm editing these clips, I have cinematics to work with. But before we get onto cinematics, let's get onto the actual shot. So if I play this, as you can see, looks really stupid, but I feel like slowing it down will look a lot better. So let's slow it down here by dragging this here. So then we're gonna make it go to a lower point in time so there's not a lot of movement between it. And we're gonna have it go fast, and then it's just gonna really slow down and simmer. So let's try something like this. This might look good. Okay, I think that still needs to be just a tiny bit slower, so we'll drag that down lower. I did not mean for that to rhyme, but there we go. Okay, that looks pretty good actually, maybe just a little bit faster, but you just want to mess around and tweak these settings till you get what you're looking for. Okay, I actually really like that. Now for this part, we're gonna do the cinematic. Now cinematics are very similar, but a little bit different to work with. As you can see, this clip is really slowed down, so we need to speed it up, time stretch, make it 06. Like I said, majority of you guys will not have to do this part, but because my clips are slowed down in particular, I have to do that. So we're gonna get that out of the way. And for cinematics, what I like to do is I like to find the part where I want the cinematic to start. So as you can see, he gets shot over here. So we're gonna start the cinematic around right here. And another thing I noticed is the beat kind of builds into a melody over here. See, there's a really big empty area here. However, there's also a melody. So it kind of starts off at like a lower tone and then it goes to a higher key. There's no kick or snare, it's just a blah, blah. You know what I mean? That was probably a really bad interpretation, but I have an idea for that. What we can do is we can actually have the flow over here as well by doing a little crossfade. So let's give that a try. So right here is this shot. What if he's about to scope in and we have that fade in? So it's gonna be like... Something like that will look really cool. So let's do a fade in. Now there are many ways to do a fade in. You can use any transition you want, but in this instance, I feel like a simple opacity fade will look best. So let's go over here, press T on our keyboard. I pressed R by accident. Press T to enable opacity. We're gonna have it at 100% there. We're gonna go to this one right here and make it 0%. Now I do have it one frame to the left because if we have it here, it's just gonna be nothing anyway. So might as well have it on nothing already. So once we have it like that, it's gonna fade in. And that looks kind of cool, but first, before we can work on this clip, we need to work on this clip. So let's enable timer mapping, control alt T, frame, keyframe there at the start, keyframe here at the end. You guys already know how we do it, we've done this before. F9 to easy ease it, open the graph editor. Now we have stuff to work with. Now as you can see, this clip does not go on screen for a long time. It goes away very fast, so it's like boom, boom, and the cinematic's already over. There's not a lot of time to see what's going on. For the most part, you can't even tell what the cinematic is. So we want to fix that. So for an example, let me hide this layer on top by clicking that. Let's just only work on this. Now I'm going to hold control to place the keyframe here. I'm going to drag this up and we want to really have a subject in our frame. Now that's kind of what we did for all of these clips already. The subject here is the running. Then on this long pause, we have him putting it away, which is the subject there. Then we have him pulling it back, which is another subject. Boom. That's the shot. Over here, we want to focus on this guy dying. Otherwise, you can't even tell what the cinematic is. Like I said, this frame's not visible so we'll drag it one frame to the left and now this is the way most people do velocity is what they'll do is they'll have it go really fast and then slow down and then really fast at the end again now if you're really good at flow and i mean really good because this is not easy to pull off you can get really creative with the graph and make something like completely different and it might just look insane but for this cinematic we're just going to go with the classic fast slow fast so to do that, we'll have it go up so it's fast, slow down here so it's on this frame longer, and then go over here, make it fast again. And as you can see, it's gonna slow down on that guy. Now I also gotta enable motion blending so we don't drop any frames. And let's see how this looks. 
Okay, that's not too bad, actually. I feel like the cinematic starts at a point that is too early. So we're gonna go here, drag it up a little, move this down a little, go here. And as you can see, the graph's not going down at all, so there's not gonna be any reverse. I see a mistake that is quite common with beginners, is they'll make this super flat like this. Now that's fine, however, on this part, it's gonna be either completely frozen, or it's gonna reverse for a tiny, tiny amount. But in this instance, it should be fine. So as you can see, that looks pretty good. Now we're on to this clip over here, which is the little crossfade. And for the crossfade, we're just going to do the same velocity we did earlier. So we're going to make a keyframe here, one at the end, drag this one over here. And you guys already know how this goes, so I'm not going to waste your time having you watch me do this again. But for one more time, for I guess one last good measure, let's do this again. So we're going to have the subject, which is what we want here. We want him to really scope in. Now we want it to be kind of fast at the end, so we'll have this go here. And I usually don't like the scope being on the very last frame. I like having it have a little bit of room. So not like this in the middle, but just like this. I feel like this usually looks the best for my edits. So I'm going to put it there. We got him pulling the bolt in, which is going to be our subject. I'm going to have it start fast, have it slow down, hold alt so these are unlinked, drag this out, make it like that. Let's see how this looks. Okay, I think this is a little too slow, so we're gonna make this a little lower. But as you guys can see, this is all mainly just trial and error. You really wanna just keep on messing, keep on tweaking with the graph until you get something that looks good. So I'm gonna do the rest of this edit because I pretty much showed you guys the basics and like how to do it as a beginner. But I'm gonna finish this edit and I'll show you guys the finished result. With the blue color. Yeah. All right guys, so it's been about five or so minutes and I did the velocity on these two clips. Before I show you guys how it looks, let me show you the graph real quick so you guys have an idea of what I was going for. So as you can see, I have the shot here, then I synced it to where he pulls the bolt back, then I synced it again to where he pulls it in and scopes in, and then we got the final shot right there. So let's see how this looks. Let's play the whole thing. I'll use the tilde key to make it full screen like I talked about earlier, and let's see how it looks. So yeah, it's not too bad. Honestly, we could put a lot more effort into it, but for the tutorial, I think this gets the idea across of how to do flow. But now that our timer mapping and velocity is done, we can pretty much move on to anything else, whether it's effect, whether it's zooming in, our pan crop, or positioning, color grading, blurs, or anything like that. We're pretty much already done with the basic first step, which is the flow. So other than that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, guys. It really supports the channel and honestly means the world to me, so I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. My Instagram, Twitter, and Discord are all in the description down below, as well as my editing pack. So if you want to buy my presets, project files, tools, and other assets, be sure to check it out. It really supports the channel. But with that all being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, boys. Peace out, guys. Legacy, family.